Hey, man, so glad to see you. Everybody, here's Victor Tron. We've all been waiting a long time for this. Go for it. Hello, everyone. I would really like to keep this nice kind of chatty, interactive uh, feel, feel of this session. So let's, let, let, let me drill through some basics and then maybe we can talk about like specific points because there's so much to talk about anyway in, 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 the, in Swarm land. So the Book of Swarm is coming. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is, uh, is a kind of a, a consolidation of effort that's been running in the last basically three to four years. Uh, doing like base research and 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 uh, an exploration in the in the realm of uh, starting from decentralized storage but basically all the way to to kind of support base layer base layer infrastructure for the for the decentralized web it's quite a quite a, a ambitious project as everybody knows and uh, things are just coming to kind of full circle and, and just coming to to uh, to a reasonable state of clarity to us, and that's that's why this this book is you know, the, is, is is an important milestone, and it's very very important on the way towards uh, to to de delivering a, a kind of a, a product working on on the mainnet. Uh, there's 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 in the in the past uh, years there's been a proliferation of, of various features and and lots of lots of interesting ideas on Swarm. This year was mainly uh, focusing on. Or, or last year and this year was mainly focusing on uh, perfecting this this uh, this system in the in the in the kind of strict sense of perfecting where where it's not when it means that things are not to be added but actually to be to be removed and making it kind of bare bone uh, very 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 lean and, and and elegant and and still very very expressive and, and and try to find try to find those those elements that are absolutely needed and and build on them and now we have <clears throat> uh, come to to a to, a, to basically a, to, a, to a stage in the, in the research where, where I, but to be to be very honest it's, this is the first time when i kind of feel that that most of the most of the components are kind of ready and and and, and well understood and they they make a coherent system together so uh <clears throat> there's there's a, there's a lot of aspects to swarm First of all, uh, as, as a bit of history, uh, maybe everybody knows that uh, originally Swarm was conceived of as, as the, as the so to say, hard disk of the world computer, which was the the, the, the main uh, <coughs> banner title on on, on the Ethereum campaign, uh, the, 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 the the Ethereum's blockchain is uh, basically the, the the CPU of the world computer and. And that was imagined that like, there was two other components to make it a real usable computer. One is the, the, the data storage and the other one is communication. Now, uh, with, with time, kind of, we realized that a lot of our tools are, are usable for, for realizing this, this communication layer as well. So we kind of added it explicitly to the scope and uh, the, the, the project grew in scope to, to encompass very, uh, basically all, all, all things needed for for uh, uh, replacing everything in, in, in Web2 and, and have a Web3 solution for uh, basically building, building real-time interactive web applications from the ground up. And we, 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 we're trying to think of, of Swarm as providing a, a, a real, real uh, comprehensive platform for that. And, and, and you can think of it as basically a backend stack for the decentralized web. So, uh, there's a few components uh, that, that we can talk about, and it's, 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 since, I, since, I, since there's a lot of talks have been uh, given on, on Swarm and the general architecture, maybe I should just uh, drill through some common, some basic assumptions and uh, formulate them in the in the in the context of how how it fits into the book, and and maybe I'm, I'm gonna um, kind of be somewhat somewhat uh, just just tangentially. Uh, introduce most of the most of the new features and 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 in interesting uh, novel conceptualizations that have not really been uh, uh, presented a lot and, and then talked about a lot in talks. So what's 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 in there in the book? So first of all, first things first, the most important thing around Swarm is is that it loves acronyms, and there are there are three rules of acronyms. One is that uh, you have to have 
uh, uh, so the acronym is, a, a, of course, an abbreviation, and it, it's at the same time a, a full word. And when you when you name a component with an acronym, then you have to use a word that in itself makes sense and also uh, <coughs> relates uh, functionally or semantically to the concept that that it uh, that it, uh, it it stands for, and and also the resolutions of the acronyms, because the the, the more more there are of them, the better. Then they basically describe or, or relate, and and mnemonically uh, help you to to remember the, the functionality of that component. There's 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 this is, this has to be said because it's kind of, this is a, a playful uh, background of silliness that we that we use to to entertain ourselves and and the reader hopefully. So the 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 the, the best uh, success stories of these acronyms was the swap. The, the PS or PSS and and then some others. So here is here's the here's the table of contents of the book. Uh, um, we, we, of course, without going into into details, just let me let me kind of summarize that it's it's it, it gives a, <coughs> a, a fairly detailed uh, exposition of our of our motivation and, and the evolution of the of the of the idea and the project. Uh, it gives, it gives a bit of historical context in terms of how the web started, what the ideas of decentralized web were, and then how it all got a bit corrupted, as you guys have been talking about with, with Gregor, about this, this data collection and, and what, what forced the bargain people were, were basically coerced into <clears throat> without, without having the necessary knowledge. Well, they kind of became a bit enslaved of the data slide was operated by centralized entities and there's there's a there's a light at the end of the tunnel which is peer to peer networks and specifically we always talk about the, the peer to peer network research in a strong uh, connection with the blockchain which is the newest innovation which put everything in a very different light because we believe that blockchain basically brought the the the, the final missing piece in the puzzle to, to realize the the, the cypherpunk manifesto really so to, to have like a completely decentralized mm, well, let's 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 say let's say our, our, our real vision a decentralized data economy and, and in general decent decentralized uh, storage and communication platform and what, what this missing piece is providing is basically an incentive layer, so programmable incentives which uh, make the system not only uh, technologically performant, but uh, resilient to, to, uh, <coughs> to, to free riding. So it's basically, if, if, you, if, if there's all these perfect uh, technological solutions often that have been uh, Coming, coming out of research in the past decade, but often, often they run into a problem that the networks they build are not sustainable because they are, be, they are kind of building on altruistic behavior or betting on altruistic behavior and, and, and don't, uh, <clears throat> and, 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 and or, or, or generally the, the balance between altruism and, and, and free riding. And often uh, people get a bit disappointed when human foible shows itself. Ugly head, and uh, we believe that it's very strongly advised to, to build systems on, on uh, simply rational ma profit maximizing agents, and that's 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 where everything should start. That's, that's that's the minimal assumption that we can make, and and if things work like that, then, then uh, we have we have more, much more chance to 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 then uh, <clears throat> have a self-sustaining and and fair system. We talk a bit about data, fair data economy in general, that's, that's maybe we use into, into what Gregor was talking about. And then, then we kind of consolidate the vision into design principles and objectives. Now there's the second part of the book, which is really the, the, the deep immersion to, to the tech. It's kind of, a, it, it aspires to quasi academic standard of discussing the, the novel and innovative concepts and try to give uh, re uh, arguments for why, why the choice was made or what, what had advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> In particular, um, we, we talk about the, the basic network layer of, of SOAR, where, where which basically in implements uh, the, the, uh, the distributed immutable storage for chunks. Like 
it's not very far from the notion of DHT or distributed hash table that people know. I will talk a little bit about that. Then we talk separately about the incentivization, which is still interpreted only on this layer, clearly just, just basically on, on, on a storage of chunks. Then we talk about the high level functionality, which makes it possible to, to use this chunk storage, this very simply, simply, simple to reason about chunk storage for high level access and high level notions that, that are already meaningful to users. For example, data structures like files, uh, directories, how, how we can do uh, URL based addressing, how we can um, <coughs> weave in, weave in uh, top level domain resolution. So basically, uh, instead of the DNS, we're using, we're using Ethereum's ENS and, and, and the, the, this is one other connection with the blockchain that has provides <coughs> uh, consensus over over human human uh, readable memory me 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 claims and then uh, other other high level functions where we, where we talk about uh, access control for example it's a very very neat uh, system on top of on top of the uh, the <coughs> the other functionality and most importantly we we here discuss uh, two components, PSS and feeds, which are uh, very, very special and innovative in, in Swarm. And they really set us apart from, from, from other similar projects. And, and maybe I, I will emphasize a little bit more about, about what, what's, dif what's the difference between Swarm and, and say, IPFS or, or CIA. Uh, so, so these components, PSS and, and feeds, uh, one of them is a, is a, is a <clears throat> basically zero leak, uh, Node-to-node -node messaging uh, uh, solution, and the other one is a is a is a is a, is a solution for for creating a mutable mutable uh, resource resources. So basically, do do updates on uh, on predictable uh, uh, addresses, so, so the so the system can can provide um, <clears throat> ways to for 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 you to to up, to basically to status updates or or publish different versions of of, of Mutable resource and all, all kinds of other fancy things. Among others, you can also use this for uh, as an outbox feed, which which allows for uh, <clears throat> private uh, multi-party communication. But we're gonna see mostly mostly two-party, and <clears throat> and to, together these two is a is a very strong uh, private communications uh, proposal, which basically. Um, uh, Implements uh, implements the, the the whole signal protocol uh, style uh, 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 privacy and and adds, adds adds extra guarantees. For example, for example, anonymity and and the the kind of undetectable uh, 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 handshakes and 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 also uh, combines uh, some some features for to for. <clears throat> To, to make to make not only the encryption uh, kind of f f future secret, which is the big innovation in in, uh, in 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 signal protocol, but also make the the communication channel obfuscated in similar ways, which means that the only remaining uh, attack surface is interception, is is pretty much um, almost impossible. So so it's 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 a, it's a strong uh, uh, privacy uh, focused uh, solution for for. For, for communication, we can talk about this later. And um, after after this high level functionality, we we go into 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 particular uh, area of persistence, various ways to 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 help persistence. For example, erasure coding and, and a kind of general general client, client side uh, overhead for for storage, or kind of redundancy schemes. Then we talk about. Uh, uh, pinning, pinning, and 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 how to how to make local pinning global, which means basically a poor man's, it's a poor man's uh, persistence solution. It's basically a protocol that allows uh, nodes that that <clears throat> that are known to have a particular content to act as as repairers of of the network copy of that uh, file in in chunks, because because Swarm requires the chunks to be in a particular location, unlike other file sharing uh, paradigm systems. So uh, then after the, after the persistence, 
we, we, we switch to a, a completely different view and present the, the whole thing from the point of view of, of user experience. So he's going to talk a bit about how, how APIs should work, what kind of, uh, how, 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 how user interacts with the system and, <clears throat> and how the developers can interact with the system. And then uh, after, after the second part, the, the, the deep dive into architecture, we, we, this, this is very important to emphasize. It's a very important part of this book. It's, it's, it, it has a, a part which consolidates all these uh, components into uh, rigorously defined specs. These specs are supposed to be uh, written on, in a, on a standard and in a style that allows for, for uh, different uh, client implementations that, that talk together. So the, 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 the specs are presented in, in, in four, uh, four categories. One is, one is in general data structures and algorithms. This includes a uh, special VMT hash that's used in, in Swarm, special, special ways to represent files, et cetera, and, 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 and all the basic data structures. There's, there's the second one, which uh, describes protocols, which uh, concerns the, the wire protocols uh, that, that uh, are now uh, uh, defined on, over, over over underlay that we, we, we kind of spec that and implant it with peer to peer. Uh, this is, this is also big news because we kind of switching from, from the Ethereum based uh, dev peer to peer layer to, to the peer to peer as, as the underlay system. By the way, can you give me some feedback? Can you hear me still? Uh, yeah. We definitely hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Just, sometimes it feels like listening to my speak to the void. Okay, so thanks. Uh, okay, so we're we're fully concentrated and we're reading through the table of contents and following you, and mm -hmm. it's all so clear and amazing and just makes us want to have so many questions. But keep going. We're all here with you. So 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 data structures, protocols, via protocols, strategies, which are strictly speaking not part of the of the of the of the rigid spec, but they're supposed to be basic strategies that align align with the with the incentive system and and uh, kind of we think they they provide the the right uh, alignment of 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 both uh, self interest and and emergent uh, properties of the network and the, and then and then of course we turn to prim to turn to apis which is the fourth part of of the specs and 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 there's 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 this various back matter, so appendix about some some formalizations and proofs of some of the some of the math that's included in the in the in the, in the book. So um, this this was a bit dry. So let's 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 move on to more exciting things. Just uh, one one important choice that Swarm was making is 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 to use forwarding Kademlia as opposed to iterative Kademlia. So iterative Kademlia is 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 based on a on a, on a on, on using the, using an overlay network and 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 the and the, and the, and the distance measure on it to 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 to, to root root a, a, a query uh, based on iteratively uh, iteratively finding uh, nodes that are closer and closer to that to that address. So basically, like calling up your your friend who knows a friend and then gives, gives you the phone number and then then you call this other friend and finally you get based on the uh, the number of separation to 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 the, to the ultimate uh, destination that you want to want to get to, in, in, uh, as opposed to this, the forwarding Kademlia uh, 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 flavor which we're using is 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 kind of outsourcing this this call. So you call a friend and they 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 call their friend for you. And ultimately, the, your request or whatever message you want to get, it, it gets to the destination, and uh, then then the the response is passed back uh, to the to the same uh, uh, route. And this this is used for 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 retrieval as well as as well as uh, syncing. What syncing? Well, syncing is 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 a, is a component that you need because. Unlike other other um, systems like, for example, IPFS or, or good old, good old Napster and 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 BitTorrent, they uh, when they when you when you say that you you share your hard drive space in this in these cases means that you you open up a directory where where you have 
quantum content that you see and you, you you register that in this DHT in this in this distributed uh, key value store you register that you you're seeding that particular file and that, now now how 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 file typically is retrieved in in such decentralized uh, 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 storage applications using this technique well you you somehow route your request to the to the to the to the to the the storers of the seeder information, you get back the seeder information, then you contact the seeder and, and get, get your chunks and get your petrol content, of, of, obviously parallelly, uh, where is the, the different parts of the file are parallelly uh, coming. So, so, so there's, there's, there's obviously optimizations in that. Uh, as opposed to this, uh, Swarm has, 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 a, has a much more opinionated way of what, what sharing your, this space means. It means that that you're sharing uh, the space for to to to, be, to receive other people's content, uh, stuff that is not uh, uh, really under your control to 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 tell uh, or to select, uh, and this this of course raises some in, important uh, issues. But let's first see uh, what this looks like. It looks like that you, you, you when, when when in the in the DHT like structure you look up. Your, your where you, your content is, you actually find the node that has the content already. It's not like it's not the seeder information that stored in the in this in this overlay uh, uh, structure, but it's actually the content. It has some uh, consequences. What what why, why this, uh, this is, is 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 plausible. Uh, it it has it has a uh, consequence that you need to have as your as your data. Uh, Unit you have to have fixed sized chunks, uh, and various constraints on, on on the chunks and the addressing, and and also interestingly you have to have plausible deniability measures in in place more readily because because here here here, here the, the user is not fully in control of what they store. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, there's there's two types of chunks. This is a bit involved uh, diagram, so I, I won't go into this. But first of all, the the the, the usual one, which we we always hear about content address chunks. So this means that that uh, the the address where where a particular chunk uh, of the data is stored is depends on the on its content. It's it's uh, calculated using some sort of fingerprint, some sort of hashing algorithm. We, we use a binary Merkle tree hash. Which allows for very compact inclusion proofs, which means just for, just for the sake of an example, uh, you can prove in 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 very very few uh, uh, thirty-two byte units that, for example, your name is in Wikipedia. So that that means an inclusion proof. That you can go through all the all the all the or the data structures representing directories, or the data structures representing files, and and get get to a, the segment where you see your name, and you can prove that it's included in in the in the in the <clears throat> in the in the Wikipedia, which is then uh, 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 which is assigned to a, to a, to a, to a hash where you which which you base your proof on and that that's that can be on the blockchain with with ENS. So this is how, how basically blockchain uh, proofs bo blockchain uh, based proofs can can be done on Swarm. Uh, there's there's also another type of chunk which is uh, very interesting. Uh, this is this is a single owner chunk that's uh, that's that let me try to explain this this is basically uh, doesn't guarantee the integrity in such a strong form as 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 the as the as the content address chunk, it 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 guarantees the integrity by uh, 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 relegating it to a single owner to assign a content to a chunk identifier, and the identifier and the, and the, and the public key of the of the owner gives you the address, which means that it's 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 you know, knowing the identifier which describes a particular resource. And, and and knowing knowing the owner of this resource, you can guess the address, and and you can get uh, 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 the the owner assigned content uh, back, which means that you basically have a way to 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 model mutable resources. So these these are these are arbitrary associations for of address and 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 content, and still still has. Uh, some integrity properties which which we can use to 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 make the system work uh, with with them the same as as they work for 
for for content of these chunks. This will have some significance in the in the in the later. So the, the, the basis for this is single uh, single owner chunks. So, uh, yeah. so uh, as for the incentivization, this is this is usually the the, the, the crucial bit that people are, are very interested in because this uh, this uh, having having a full solution to this is basically the, the holy grail uh, of of the centralized storage and 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 especially uh, uh, communication as well. If, if that's incentivized, then 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 it's then it's something that has not been uh, really proposed even. In the, in the literature or in, in, the, in any kind of practic practical system either. So there are four types of uh, uh, incentives in SWOM. The one is, one is to take care of bandwidth resource sharing and uh, it's, 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 it's a peer-to-peer -peer accounting system and off-chain settlement system uh, which basically do tit for that accounting of who gives what to whom like how many chunks do you serve me when I ask how many chunks I serve you and all, all kinds of peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer accounting goes on and then and then when <coughs> when 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 serving and when, when giving and taking a, is, a, is not in balance so if 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 this if the if the debt tilts towards one peer a little bit more than than the threshold that that people want feel safe then then uh, then the peer in that sends uh, a, Basically, a commitment to pay to the to, to its debtor. This commitment to pay is 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 uh, <clears throat> implemented as a check, and you, that you can uh, cash in on a on a on, on the Ethereum blockchain in a smart in a smart contract called checkbook contract. And this this is this is this has various layers of of, of transaction cost saving, and and. Most, most, most importantly, allows for service for service exchange, which is the basis or, or kind of the basic promise of all these uh, decentralized systems, namely leaving the value with the with the users rather than uh, than uh, taking it out in a kind of rent seeking way, in a centralized way. The second, second very so the, the, this this bandwidth uh, um, incentivization is called the swap system. The, one accounting protocol and many other resolutions to it. I won't tire you with. Uh, the most uh, important thing is that that this this has been uh, fully implemented and 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 already working uh, on on the on a, on a testnet, and <clears throat> and uh, this is kind of uh, let's say let's say it's kind of what hat, and and we 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 gave a presentation about this on many talks, so I won't go into much detail. The somewhat somewhat more, more new is is the idea of postage stamps, in which which constitute the the, the gist of, of 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 dealing with dealing with uh, uh, spam spam. So how 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 to uh, circumvent the, the the problem that if someone uh, if 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 if, if someone has has this uh, opinionated storage model. So basically, when you upload uh, content, the chunks of that content should uh, travel and migrate to, to certain parts of the network where they are going to be retrieved from. <clears throat> this is called syncing, this protocol. And if, this, if, the, if there is this syncing, which means that nodes that are closer to, 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 the, to, the, to the address of the chunk that then they are, then they are uh, upstream neighbor, then they take over the chunk. So basically, uh, this is how chunks are passed and forwarded towards the, towards their locality. And uh, what's the what's the, what's the what's the incentive to do this uh, to do this movement? So how do we incentivize? Well, you incentivize with simply uh, realizing that that the, the nodes that are closer to the to the chunk will typically need it because they can they can get. Uh, Compensation for it, uh, or, it, or a, at least in the sense that the it will be retrieved. But uh, if 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 there is no guarantee that that a chunk will be retrieved, then you can just spam the network with generating uh, uh, arbitrary content and thereby expunge uh, important, uh, more important uh, chunks or, or data from the network. So in, in in order to mitigate this, we we realize that we need an upfront cost attached by the uploader too. To chunks, and interestingly, this led to a, a lot of very interesting uh, 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 consequences, which which all, all, all proved to be very useful. So, so the, the analogy that we found is most useful is, is a is another old one 
odd, odd red energy, just like checkbook. This is this is about postage stamps. So the is, inspiration is taken from uh, international delivery when you basically prepay the entire route uh, of, of of delivering a, a, a parcel or, or, or letter, and and you also pay partly for for the depositing of that letter uh, at, at the destination, and. Uh, in the same way, postage stamps, uh, they, they guarantees, they, 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 they guaranteed uh, 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 proofs of, of in payment. That's, that's even, even if it's not redistributed uh, to anyone meaningfully, even if it's just burned, uh, it, it, it is a strong signal of, of, uh, of uh, investment and and, 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 and also can signal uh, relative importance. Relative importance is very important to signal because in case of capacity shortage, the nodes will have to uh, have a, a garbage collection strategy. Basically, basically to have a strategy to decide which chunks they get rid of and which ones they want to keep. And simply, simply it seems that, that the way we worked it out, the, the postage stamp value is, is simply gives that that kind of ranking very simply uh, is 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 the is the, is the optimal strategy to 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 cut off uh, chunks based on their postage value, and and the third third uh, part of the incentives is kind of the kind of a natural extension to the previous one. It 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 does not only use the postage stamps for for uh, to as an upfront cost to to. To signal prioritization and 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 uh, prevent uh, spamming, but also to to actually uh, express wish to to store a particular file or chunk for a particular amount of time, and it's done by redistributing the the, the postage income that's 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 done in a smart contract on the blockchain with a uh, with in a kind of in a storage lottery. Or a postage lottery. Uh, I will talk a little bit about that if if you guys want. Uh, so it's it's basically the positive incentivization. Positive incentivization is 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 when when chunks get rewarded for for storing something for, for it's basically getting income for 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 proofs of storage. Uh, uh, but but it, it doesn't have any any uh, negative. Uh, uh, repercussions if you don't do that it's just it's just uh, you know positively rewards the uh, non-staked farmers or, or storers whatever you call them and this is this is uh, we, we emphasize from the beginning that we, we believe that this is only part of the story for some some uh, type of, of 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 data you need uh, negative incentives you, you need the threat of punitive measures uh, looming around above your head to 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 give insurance and, and to give uh, reliable uh, guarantees to, to 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 store a file, because because otherwise you get into a kind of tragedy of commons problem, and of course even if the, the positive incentives is a good one, uh, if you have if you have your personal data backup or your birth certificate on Swarm, then you don't want the ninety nine point nine percent, but you want the six nines at the end at least. So. This is this is where insurance comes in, and that's the, that's the end of, in the future the fourth stage of, of incentivization. Uh, so uh, I, can, I can talk a bit about the, the how how we how we solve the problem of postage stamps, uh, so so that we don't have to pay uh, and 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 prove a, 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 an entire uh, blockchain transaction for every chunk that we upload. It's kind of a, a clever solution. Maybe we can talk about that. But uh, let's let's move on to the to the to the postage race model. So this this is this is basically a, a, a kind of raffle. So it's it's basically a lottery which is is randomly selecting uh, some nodes, uh, some some neighborhoods uh, with with a, with a raffle that that goes on periodically on the blockchain, and. The, the 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 nodes the farmer nodes can respond to this to this opportunity that that their neighborhood was selected and apply with with pre-committing uh, to 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 promise that okay I I know that I'm in that neighborhood and I I claim that I submit I I I I 
own and, and, and possess all the chunks that I previously given receipt for uh, that, that I'm, I'm a closer not to. Uh, and, 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 and therefore, I, 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 I promise that I have all of them. And then, then they get some challenge. And for, for, for those, uh, those two challenges, basically select, select some witness, witness postage batches. And they have to uh, prove, prove, they have to give proofs of custody for those chunks that are uh, part of this witness batch. So basically, basically those those they have to uh, show show those chunks that are stamped with a particular postage stamp, and then and then if they survive these challenges, they can earn. We we we, we, we term this the race race model. So this is this approximately how it looks, looks like. There's a there's a, a few a little bit loose ends here, but but it's this this is basically the the the, the main model. Uh, there's there's also a, a, another uh, issue which which I didn't talk about, which is pinning. This also relates to the fact that 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 swarm is a is a so so the disk model is is basically not not like file sharing. So uh, in in file sharing, if you if you pin your content, then you basically promise that you, you don't only uh, um, uh, uh, you you will, you will always have that that particular. Uh, uh, File or, or 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 a directory that you have on your shared hard drive, and then and then people can always turn to you as 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 the as the last uh, uh, of hope in, in in when when they when they find that all the other seeders are not not found, and in in Swarm it's a bit more complicated because in Swarm normally the it's 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 at their network location or proximity to the to the to the actual address where the where the chunk is retrieved and the chunk is, is sought is, is searched and therefore if, if that if those nodes that are close to this chunk are garbage collected then no matter how 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 many other nodes pin it locally they are not going to be reachable and so this this protocol uh, is kind of a clever way to circumvent that and, and implement global pinning in swarm which brings which will come this will come as our uh, as our uh, alpha release, this feature, and this is this basically brings Swarm uh, on a par with with IPFS, and in the sense that this this, this simple poor man's uh, persistent solution can already guarantee that your your DApps are, uh, are are always available, even even though you you, you might not uh, have the, the 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 positive or, or negative. Uh, uh, incentivization put in place by them to 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 guarantee that that they are not garbage collected, but they they can always be repaired through through this uh, recovery protocol that that this codifies. So once again, this this is global pinning, which takes care of of repairing the network when certain chunks are are uh, missing, given given the assumption that there are volunteer volunteer or paid uh, pinners. That, that pin the content and and volunteer to take part in this in this repair protocol. So this is this is new and uh, as I mentioned the the, the P, P, PSS and feeds together they they give us uh, they give us the very strong uh, communications uh, model and proposition uh, which is <coughs> which is basically allows for 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 for. Uh, implementing the, implement the signal protocol together with the with the extended triple uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange, uh, which is uh, server-based originally, but you can you can very simply uh, implement it in serverless fashion on Swarm. So this 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 protocol key exchange protocol is basically providing the 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 seed material for for encryption in in the in the post post handshake communication protocol. Which is in the case of Signal the double ratchet algorithm. Uh, uh, double ratchet is 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 a is a kind of key management uh, scheme, which has not only the 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 the, the good old uh, requirements for end-to-end uh, -end encryption of uh, all, all, all kinds of properties like how how you cannot break it, but it uh, also has Back, backward secrecy and forward secrecy, and uh, backward secrecy is a somewhat newer notion. It it's it's also called uh, 
post compromise uh, security, which means that uh, even if they intercept uh, one uh, message, message they cannot, it, it, it says nothing about about your uh, ability to to open and, and understand later messages, unless you unless you uh, intercept several in a row in, in certain circumstances, and this is this is mitigated by 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 swarms. Uh, other component that feeds, which which implement the actual uh, actual the the post uh, uh, handshake communication, it's it has this kind of outbox feed model, which this this exemplifies communication between A and B, the A A one A two A three are are, are different messages uh, one after the other sequential messages, which are uh, uploaded by A and downloaded by B. And the the green ones are the other way around, so they basically represent A and A's and B's uh, outbox feed, uh, yes, respectively. And you think of think of these as ephemeral chunks, which serve as rendezvous points where 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 where, where these two parties expect their messages to be to be uh, uh, to be there. Uh, this this is based on. On, uh, on feeds which are based on single owner chunks. So again, again a, a construct which allows B to know the address of a message without having to commit because of the content address nature, have either having to commit to, to what the content is. So basically uh, we can have a, a, a predictable uh, indexing scheme for this for these outboxes and but predictable means that it's predictable for A and B, but it's, it's completely random from, from, the, from the outside perspective. So, so it, this basically obfuscates the, 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 the communication channel itself, not only, not only the, the content. And, and, and this, this makes a lot of attacks a lot harder. So, so basically, P, P, PSS is, is the node-to-node -node communication uh, solution, which is uh, used just uh, just for to, to establish communication channel and and this outbox feed pattern is what's used for, for the actual real-time uh, communication channel and there's lots of other goodies that that this, these two schemes can can give you which are all written in the book uh, let's not go into them and lastly let's go into a bit about the api the this form api uh, has uh, this is kind of just a Funny this depiction that looks like a mandala, but uh, so this this uh, gives you the, the 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 four different components. So uh, uh, ideally, the 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 the, AP, the APIs and the, and the functionality of Swarm will be uh, we distinguish between basic and 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 uh, so primitive primitive APIs and and and, and composite or uh, complex APIs which which are put together as Lego pieces from from the primitive ones. These are the these are the yellow ones and the primitive ones are the orange ones. Uh, red red ones uh, is basically depict depict the, the basic algorithms that don't necessarily have a have a have an external API. And green ones uh, uh, are are the, are the Interface points with 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 without uh, outside systems, so basically they 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 encompass the, the blockchain, so the blockchain ETH API, uh, signer signer API, which uh, which can can be a separate process that handles the user's keys and and, and handles signatures and and all kinds of authorizations that you need from the user. And there's there's a local state store which whose access is also kind of permission uh, based on permissions, and 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 maybe other other ways to get user input, and then, and these these composite APIs uh, use these these external components as well as the inter as well as the in, inside internal ones, and and build up their their functionality based on that. But how it's it's maybe maybe it's one two point oh. But we can kind of experiment it with this, with this idea of to to to, to bring this uh, uh, an experimental feature to to for to, to to implement some of the some of the high level APIs. Uh, so this is basically a, a, a 
a small scripting language and 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 a corresponding uh, uh, you know, dream of having having a having a standard library and, and kind of repository structure which can uh, enhance uh, the ecosystem growth in a very in a very transparent way because it, it, it formalizes the, the the ways in which people can contribute uh, and, and not not burden the, the core implementation of clients with with uh, with adding adding features so it basically liberates the the, the app development from the from the core of, you know, from the, of the of the of Swan and and also uh, very importantly makes the makes the core proposition much leaner uh, because because all the all the high level functionalities can be can be can be regarded as truly second layer. So basically, this 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 uh, this um, architecture now now really made it explicit how how we how we can uh, think of uh, think of uh, second layer solutions this one and how how it's uh, realized. So uh, these are some examples of of what this 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 API uh, structure would look like. This is why I'm like chunk package on, on, the, on, the, on the library uh, and and some of the some of the script examples it's it's kind of just there for the for the eye candy of the of the deeply ner nerdy ones like me Victor, this, Victor can, I, can i ask you a question from the audience uh, at this point before you continue because it this, might be relevant this, 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 is the, this is the end pretty much so i would i would like to open it up anyway okay cool so Grace Rachmani asks, how do you address redundancy? So, so redundancy is, 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 is quite ambiguous. So there's very, very various ways to approach this, this ambiguity, this, 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 uh, this, this thing of redundancy. So first of all, you have to have redundancy as a, re as a resilience against simple node churn. So for example, if you say that the closest node to, to the, so, so nodes, nodes have over overlay addresses in the overlay space and, and chunks have addresses in that same space. And so the, the sim simple uh, story of the, of the disk uh, model is that the closest node to a chunk address stores that chunk. But if, if it's really the, the singular closest node, then of course, if that node uh, disappears and there was no, there was no uh, kind of opportunistic caching by the other nodes, then, 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 this, then the content disappears. So this, this very basic uh, churn uh, uh, pr protection is needed, and we 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 solve that by simply doing simply doing local replication. So so every node's neighborhood, which comprises of maybe maybe four nodes, they 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 will replicate the content. So so there's a core uh, core uh, neighborhood concept in Swarm, which which are nodes that are. Uh, uh, Mutually, mutually fully, fully connected and, and sync all their content within within their within their vicinity. So, so that's that's basic churn churn uh, protection redundancy. There's redundancy for for to to to, uh, to so for example erasure coding, which which is is used on a per level basis. So, per level means that when 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 the file the the, the ways files are are represented, is that is, is that you you have you, you kind of hierarchy, hierarchy package up uh, data chunks into 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 intermediate uh, chunks, and then and then build up build up a structure of of a tree, and then if you, if you if you allow uh, redundancy uh, erasure coding on, on these levels, what you what you basically get uh, to is a system where where uh, when you when you download the file, you you can have a race of of you erase the, the, the so each intermediate chunk has like for example one hundred and twenty eight ch children, and if you do the if you do erasure coding, then you say that I don't need to download all the all the one hundred and twenty eight, but actually just one hundred of them, but any one hundred and any one hundred can reconstruct the the, the original one hundred for me. So there's there's a bit of overhead. You put parity chunks to the original chunks, and use use usual coding theory to 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 give some redundancy protection for you. 
Cool. So I have two follow-up questions that come from Grace. Yes. I'll give you the second one first because it's related. Um, <clears throat> can a user control how much uh, redundancy they get? And if it's mission critical, could they pay for additional, in quote marks, hosting or multi-geographical redundancy for disaster recovery? Or So let's call it multiple data center on multiple geographical locations. Well, in, in the second one, it's, it's certainly going to be some sort of second layer solution because uh, Swarm doesn't have a, 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 a linear notion of geographical location. So it's more like a political or regulatory uh, need that, that needs to be catered for. But I'm sure there's going to be uh, going to be some is initiatives which solve this problem. I think probably Fair, Fair Data Society also has some sort of GDPR compliance solution on the way. But uh, to go to the previous question, whether, 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 whether simply the user can can enforce redundancy, uh, like uh, can pay for extra redundancy levels, then yes, the 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 the, the answer is yes. So the, the erasure, erasure coding uh, level is 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 also uh, configurable by the by the by the user, but also as 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 the. But as 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 the as the positive uh, uh, negative issuances uh, will be in place, then also uh, manipulating your 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 postage stamp price, so how much value you attach your, to your postage stamp, this can also be basically uh, some sort of protection, and which is not through redundancy but through through extra payment that you you make you make your chunk more uh, attractive to for stores to store because. They can get more money for it. Simply. Okay, so that's perfect for the for the first uh, question that she asked, which is: Do data owners have any say about whether a data host uh, would decide to trash their data? Well, yes. So, 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 so they they can of course uh, calibrate that through through the positive incentives, but of course, if they want to be really sure, then they. We have to also ensure it, and 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 or and or use use this kind of poor man's insurance uh, method that I talked about, where you actually have have your 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 friends or your own your own uh, data center nodes to have a fallback copy, and 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 take part in a kind of recovery mechanism where if 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 the if the location where the, where the node is normally stored. That garbage garbage collects the content, then then you can still you can still recover it from the from the from the registered uh, pillars. So kind of you know, fall back to fall back to a to a to a non non address driven uh, uh, recovery mechanism. So there's oh. many various ways to 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 cater for redundancy and and and, and, and let's call it persistence after all. Awesome. Uh, yeah, just a simple question. When the chunk is repaired, uh, then it's not just served, but it's put in the uh, location where it should be, right? That means the re repair. Um, if the chunk is missing and it's uh, and it's it's gotten from the pin pinned uh, data, then the chunk goes to uh, the node where it should usually reside, and it's stored there, or exactly, or it's just served. Exactly, it's it's meant as a as a as a as a as a as a network repair. So re-upload basically re-upload with the with the new with the, with the re re new postage stamp. Sorry, sorry. Yes, so 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 not just to the person that asked for it, but it also re re-uploaded right to the so so the next yeah. one it's coming. In fact, in fact, primarily primarily it will be it will be going to the to the to the to the to the re to the to repair the network and and also as a secondary op option the, the 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 downloader who, who notifies the spinner basically who, who has so to say who co files a complaint that this file is not there is basically they can send a, a, a so-called so addressed envelope in which they can directly get the the the, the chunk back mm -hmm. uh, as well if you want the quick quick response but, but ultimately, they can also just wait for the repair and, and get the chunk from there. I, I have another question because I didn't know actually that, um, but this is fairly basic, so it ex escaped me that um, 
the chunk is stored at uh, one particular node, right? Uh, because of the, like you just said. Yeah. But but then it's only at one place, at one node, or uh, except if, if you did do this replication, right? So it's not, usually it's not in more than one place uh, in the network, because it has exact address in the so, so as I said, there's there's there is a redundancy uh, driven uh, nearest neighborhoods. The nearest neighbors basically uh, replicate their content. Oh, okay, so, good. So there's, there's there's local actual replication plus plus there is there is this coding schemes which 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 are also which are you know based on have, having some sort of storage overhead to create parity chunks but have the have the ability to to, to lose some of the chunks and still have enough uh, information to recover the original oh, okay. it's usually called like an out of an out of k system so, so you, you you have you have an original n and chunks you create k redundancy uh, parity chunks which gives you a total of n plus k so we have like the k k chunks of inflation but 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 then you gain the, the the you gain the property that any any n out of the n plus k chunks can re reconstruct the original. So this is kind of information information theoretically optimal coding with with, with erasure codes. There are there are other, other types of error coding. We're working together with a with a research group in in in, in Stavanger University, in Norway, who are basically led by. Veronica. Veronica is the inventor of entanglement codes. Entanglement codes are a type of erasure code which optimizes on, on, the, on the bandwidth of repair. What does it mean? It means that as opposed to the, the erasure codes where you have to download all the 128 ch child tongue, chunks, or sorry, 100 of them, to repair a single one that's missing, in, in the case of entanglement codes, you can just get away with with downloading two particular ones and 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 get the repair from them so it's it's a bandwidth optimal uh, redundancy measure which is uh, typically used for for files where when you don't download the whole file so for example when you you just random access to the file for example key value databases and stuff so this this is a very this cool i've got i've got the next one uh, before I before I let Grace ask her question, I'm going to ask everyone to turn on their cameras. That doesn't have a problem with being recorded to YouTube, so we have a nice uh, visual room for for Victor for the Q and A. Um, and now we'll get to the interactive discussion part that that Victor was excited about when he came into the room. Um, Grace, why don't you ask your next question? Because it's an awesome one. Sorry, I'm I'm so excited about this technology. I have tons of questions. Um, I don't mean to like take up all the space, but I'm so excited. Um, so my question is: Let's say that I want to earn money as someone who's uh, one of the peers who hosts on the Swarm network. Yes. Is there any way that I would be able to know? Like, I don't want it. Obviously, I don't want liability for somebody's chunks, and I can't read their chunks, and I don't want to. But could I have some kind of screening mechanism? Like if I didn't want to host porn or if I didn't want to host military secrets, could I set, make some settings to do that? Or would that be like an upper level solution, some other layer? Uh, yes and no. So this is a very, very good question. Thank you. It's often asked question. Well, like the, the kind of the somewhat hand wavy and also dismissive answer is that, that as an infrastructure project, we, we really value value impartiality, and therefore we we don't want in the protocol level any any kind of measure for for screening, uh, whitelisting, any any kind of thing. In fact, <clears throat> I mean, in the context of child porn, of course, this is of, of often not regarded as a very uh, attractive answer, but I would say that. In the world, there's a lot more problems with, with 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 freedom of speech restrictions than than anything else, and and of course, of course, with child porn, of course, the problem is is child abuse, not not the digital uh, replication of it. 
uh, <clears throat> I mean, we can go into this, this kind of moral discussion, but in general, I think that, uh, I, I think we, it's, it's important to emphasize that on the infrastructure level, it's always mm, imperative to actually protect permissionless publishing because, because <laughs> Because then it, it pushes put it pushes any kind of censorship uh, censorship uh, uh, initiative on the level where it belongs. It's like a kind of self self voluntary association of of people who want to commit to a particular standard or, or a particular style and content, and 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 that can be done even even with kind of. Uh, self-enforcing tools for example just remember what i said about the, the, the that you can prove that your name is in wikipedia in the same way you can prove that uh, your 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 content that you that is associated with your ownership on ens you can promise that you won't list uh, content that your favorite big brother committee uh, can, can uh, um, Judges as 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 immoral or or unliked or undesirable. So basically, you can you can formally wow to a to a, to a whitelist or to, to to kind of avoid the blacklist in your in your in in the references of of the sites that you that belong to you, which means that it's kind of a strong proposition itself because you can automate and self enforce. Uh, non-linkability of, of controversial content. But of course, these this, this solutions all hinge on your, your committee to be reliable and not over applying their censorship judgments, which basically never happens because these committees are always gonna have incentives to over apply. Uh, uh, and, and therefore the result is often, if, 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 you, if you allow this censorship, uh, uh, um, judgments to be to be implemented on the infrastructure level. So basically, uh, having subpoena uh, hosting companies to take off content, then basically it results in deplatforming uh, a lot of uh, legit content providers, which is happening, as we know, in Twitter and Facebook. So, so the res result is often suboptimal. So in fact, I, I'm kind of so we committed to, to preserve this feature on the on the infrastructure level, and and to be honest, I would also preserve that on other levels and and resort to more of a good taste and self restraint when it comes to censorship. I don't know if this was a an answer that you were looking for. That, that was a great answer. Gregor, I'd like to bring you into discussion because uh, Victor mentioned earlier that there were pieces of the puzzle that he hoped that the Fair Data Society would be solving. Um, how, how are you, what are you gonna be addressing? So here, Fair Data Society, I think after, after Victor's talk and explaining uh, all the, uh, bits and pieces of uh, Swarm. Now it makes more sense how Fair Data Society can address like uh, a level higher questions. Here, uh, it is not relevant for Swarm to uh, speak and discuss about things like GDPR. But on the other side, you know, if if you want to make uh, uh, Fair Data economy a reality, we also need to address these kind of things. So, um, Moreover, uh, we've seen a lot of intricacies uh, the uh, Swarm has and uh, as a base layer, uh, <clears throat> Fair Data Society here then addresses more the ecosystem, the app layer. And uh, concretely, uh, as Victor mentioned, uh, you know, it's, uh, there, could be, there could be solutions, level two solutions emerging, which kind of can present, for example, yeah, geofence data where nodes uh, on the second layer, they, they KYC, if you want to say like this, that they are located in a specific geographic area. 
and maybe these nodes can then commit to storing some data, etc. So, and at the same time, this keeps Swarm neutral. It keeps, uh, as Victor pointed out, you know, um, there shouldn't be like this kind of restrictions and uh, on the on the level of Swarm because this actually ensures integrity of Swarm in long term. Did this answer your question? Yeah, it does. Yeah. I, would, I, would also, I would also add that in terms of kind of technological purity, I don't want to advocate solutions which are kind of unsolvable uh, technologically. So uh, geographical lo location is, as far as I know, not something that that, that can be proven or, 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 or let alone enforced. Uh, so so it's, it's, it has no place in, in, in and plus it, plus it, I'm, I have I'm reservations whether it makes any yeah. kind of sense in terms of security in general. They will, they will give up this because technology is just too strong. They cannot control that requirement in this kind of services. This is where this shines. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, still, it's still a case that if it's, if it's part of the regulatory, uh, well, then it stops to be the part of regulator because it's just impossible to enforce. So, problem solved. Yeah, but it also, also sucks to be an entrepreneurship which, or sorry, an enterprise which want, want, to, want to play by the rules and does not want to 